guys, it's May May, and I'm hoping that our internet holds out today because we're supposed to have some weather coming through. It's funny how we say that because there's weather all the time. Anyway, it's May May and her sidekick. Oh, yeah. Vinny's here. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Honestly, we say we're supposed to have some weather coming through. Well, we have weather coming through every day. It's just sunny or not sunny. <laughs> right? Yep. Crazy, huh? I'm going to get my screen set for you guys. So today... We're gonna do something super fun. We're gonna kick something all fun, actually. I, well, let me start with, I got this pillow punch board. I think I showed this a while back that we were carrying this in the store now. Um, you know I collect these punch boards. Whether we sold them in the store or not, I would have them because I collect them and I think they're super fun. And I have never played with this before until I made this little purse. This is not my idea. This totally came from Pinterest. I was looking on Pinterest at all the things you can do with the pillow punch board and I'm like, or with the pillow punch box. I was like, dang, you can do all kinds of stuff with this. So what we're gonna do, and I wanna tell you this real quick before we get started, is we're starting a contest on our store. Now, a lot of you guys already know about this, but we have a spot called the Customer Gallery, and the way you get to that is on the red bar at the top of our website, at the menu, it'll say More. Click More or hover over More, and you'll see Gallery. So what I'm gonna ask you guys to do is make Pillow Punch, um, boxes whatever you want i'm uh, not pillow punch pillow boxes and decorate them any way you want to and put it into our gallery and that's your entry now the only requirement we've got is this you have to link a product that you used in the store okay so it might be your art glitter glue it might be the paper it might be the punch board whatever you use and the reason for that is they won't show up if they don't have a product they get pushed aside so you want to make sure that you put um unappreciated Vinny oh my gosh you're the most appreciated thing in my life <laughs> sorry Tony I have to disagree with that one um I just saw a comment so I was I shouldn't have commented on a comment I should have kept talking anyway to get it into our gallery we have to make sure that we say uh that you have a product in there okay so just uh, it's real easy to do go to the gallery add something you'll add a photo of yours now I also made a Pinterest board called pillow punch ideas or no I think it's pillow board ideas and you can go look at that to get some ideas. Now we're gonna run this contest for three weeks, okay? So you have plenty of time. So if you don't have time today to make one, don't worry, the next time you're crafting, make one and design it some way and share it with us in our gallery. I think these are super cute. I think you'll have a lot of fun doing them. And if you do have this, this is so, so easy and so much fun. You can make four of these, this size pillow boxes from one 12 by 12 piece of paper. So if you were doing a um, party or favors or something like that, this is perfect. Just real quick, while I want to I want to make sure I mention this. Tamitha has got all the guidelines on our blog post, and the blog post I'll link to this after we're over with, um, so you'll be able to see that. the The prize is fifteen dollars to our store, so um, it'll be super cool. So, and I saw somebody say they made something without a product. Remember this: you didn't necessarily buy it from me, but the product you would use, like if it's art glitter glue or whatever. You may not have bought your glue from me. You may not have bought your paper from me. You may not have bought your twine from me. Whatever is on the site, pick the one that you used for it, and that way it gets put on there. If that makes sense, because they go into the product. It's it's a long story. There's a lot of back stuff. But anyway, let's make one of these. Super fun. Um, I'm going to use the punch board. Oh, I also want to tell you this. For those of you who don't have the punch board, you can make them using your Cricut machine, using your Silhouette machine, using your Brother's Scanning Cup machine, or... We have linked a printable PDF in the blog post. There's no reason you can't do this. There's a printable PDF in the blog post, so you can print that out and make yourself a pillow box and then decorate it any way you want to, okay? So, no reason you can't participate. These We have made it for everyone. All right, here's what I'm using. Look, how may may is this, right? I did a little post while ago. I said, how may may is this set of paper? What do you think? Pretty strong on your side right there. This is because of you, because this comes from the Jungle Safari paper pack. And you picked that out because of the zebra, so we're using that today. I think well, it's cute. Um, ain't that song. And I use, and this one is the six by six pad, by the way, not the big one. I think it's cool. So this is a six by six piece of black cardstock. This one is 65 pound. You could use heavier, it doesn't matter. And here's how this guy works so easy. First off, 
the width of your pillow box has to be six inches, okay? That's what it works with, six inches. But you can make it as long as you want. So if you had something up to, tw well, not as long as you want, up to 12 inches, so this says. But if you had a, a full 12 inch piece, you can make a long pillow box and it'd be super cool. Imagine for candy bars and stuff like that, that'd be neat. All right, here's how it works. You've got a green start line right here. You're gonna take your paper and put it into the punch on that green start line. Ooh, before you do anything, pull out your bone folder, which you can use your embossing tool for this, but I'm gonna use, actually, I may use my embossing tool because I didn't really like the way this worked a while ago. So let's see how that goes. So on the green start line, okay, we're gonna start and we're gonna punch. And then I'm gonna use my embossing tool, the bigger end, and I'm gonna put it into this little area right here where this curve is. Yep, I actually like this better because I can't turn this as well. It gets kind of hung on that piece, so this works really well. So you're gonna score that curve line, and then you're gonna score a vertical right here. And that'll drop right into it, and I've got the vertical. Now I'm gonna move it down. Here's something I love about this board, which other ones don't have from my experience. They call this the nook. This little piece right here is the nook, okay? You put this curve into the nook, and line it up on the edge and you know you're in the right spot. I love that. And look, the little caption bubble. Can you see why we call this a caption bubble? It's pretty clever. It is, isn't it? The caption bubble point right here lines up where it goes to. So punch, get over the top of that dude. Score, the curve and the vertical. Ooh, I slipped. The curve and the vertical, get that in there. And then you're gonna move it out again. Go back to the nook. I love that. I think it makes things easy punch and this time you're only going to score the curve so just score that curve now get up in there and score it good because you'll find you'll need that when you go to bent to fold now what you do is you flip it over so now all of this is at the bottom and you do the same thing at the top it's really easy to use i love this thing but i love most punch boards everybody knows that about me up here score move it to the nook punch I have to get on that one. <laughs> sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. Score the curve, score the vertical, move it over, punch, and then score. Just that part. Pretty cool, huh? Can you see how that's gonna turn into a? Well, it's quite interesting, actually. <laughs> I have to tell Vince to speak up because you guys keep saying you can't hear him. So I'm going to say, you guys speak up, Vinny, Vinny Boo. Okay. It's hard to imagine. Miss Jellum said that you found a punch board that you like. <laughs> it is so hard to believe that. I am such a fan of punch boards. I can't help it. So now what you do, super easy, these little pieces that we scored right here, and I'm glad I used the black because look how the lines are showing. I'm going to cut that away. So I'm just going to use it as my guide, and it doesn't have to be perfect. You just want to get the bulk. So we're getting rid of that piece we don't need. We're going to do that on both sides of this. This is such a fun, easy project, okay? Remember, you can make them into anything. I want you to look at that Pinterest board. I want you to go out there online and do a Google search. Now I am using this um, bone folder for the creasing. I think they work well for that. Now I'm going to add some sticky tape, and I'm actually going to use two different sizes of sticky today. I'm going to use my 20 mil. This is kind of the thicker one. I love this for this section right here. So let me lay this out so I can get it to lay kind of flat. And I'm gonna put some here on this corner. And I'm gonna run it down the edge, just like so. Then I'm just gonna use a one inch block and rip that away right where I need it to be, just like so. That works perfect. If you couldn't see that in my hand, that's a one inch acrylic block on the edge. I just think that works really cool. All right, are we ready to assemble? Any questions before I assemble? No, nope, not yet. Everybody's okay. just talking a little bit. So I'm going to release this backer paper so it, it exposes our adhesive. And then I'm going to fold it over like this. And this is cool too. So I'm going to put my finger right here. And I can just fold this over right onto that adhesive. You can pre-fold if you want to go ahead and get a nice score in and do all that. But because I want this to be kind of puffy, I really don't care to pre-fold this. I think it works just fine just folding it over like so. Oh, I forgot to do the thumb punch. I'll show y'all. Man. Jane Peters wonders, do you have uh, something called a deep background file? I don't know what that is. I didn't know what it was either, sir. Normally, when you do this, you would do, um, you would create this guy like you did. Let me show you. You would create this guy, and then the middle piece, you would do the thumb punch, which is down here. So you would just slide it in, 
and punch it. I'm not going to be able to punch through both of these, and I'm not going to. I'm not going to worry about that. But you normally do your little thumb punch, and I can show you on the one I made earlier that it does have it. What that does is so when you open one end, you can get your thumb in there or your finger in there, and so you can see that it has the little cutout. And I did it on this one, and I forgot to do it for you guys. Sorry about that. All right. Now, this is where it got a little tricky, and it's folding these dudes down. And what I discovered is you want to get in there and push at the score line. And you may not get it folded at first. It's more important to get the fold line turned down, and then the rest will kind of just happen. See how smooth that went? My first time didn't because I discovered that I just got to get to the score line and press. And if I do that... It pretty much falls into place and I don't get too many wrinkles that I don't want. So just work that score line and then you can come back and smooth anything you need to. Pretty cool. The black Somebody shows, says it's like a McDonald's hot, hot apple pie. It is. I love that. I love it. It reminds me of that so much. There's that. Are we you can, having those for lunch today? That'd be nice. You can also do this with toilet paper rolls. By the way, by the way, just an idea. See how I just did that exactly how I told you not to do it? Get that finger in there and find that score line. And that works best, okay? And you'll know the front from the back because of where your crease is. See where that seam is? That's the bottom and that's the top, okay? Now let's make the pretties. I like the pretties. <coughs> Ooh, I got a tickle in my throat, okay. Jane clarified what a deep uh, folder was. She says a deep background pile is a group of file folders I've had for over 10 years and never look into. But <laughs> I know most of what's in them. I was like, what is that? That's hilarious. I like it. I like it. Okay. I'm going to use the Brutus Monroe foundation dies in ovals. And I'm using one, two, three, four, the fifth one. I thought it worked really well. So I'm using these guys. I love them. They have a cute little stitch line. I'm going to use my A plate, my B, my magnetic plate, and my cuddle bug. This is the cuddle bug from Cricut. Everybody asks me about it every time I use it. I'm going to put a B plate on top of my magnetic plate to protect it. I'm going to put my die with the cut side facing up, okay? And then I'm going to lay my paper on top of that. I better put this in a place that my scrap paper will work because I've used some of this paper before. I'll slide that in there and get that on top. Then I'm going to use my janky B plate which is the one I've used a thousand times on the top so I don't have to stress about the cut lines. I wouldn't anyway, but so many people do not like when I have messy plates. <laughs> oh, well. I run these through a couple times because that's just who I am, but you don't really have to do that. I just have the habit of doing that. And sometimes it messes me up because sometimes things shift around, but we'll see how it did. Let's put this down here again. Pick this guy up. Nah, we did all right. Super cute, we got a zebra one. All right, I'll move this away. Put that over here. Now then, what I did was I folded this in half, just meeting it up, lining it up, and folded it in half with my fingers. You could score it if you needed to. No really, no real need to. And then I creased it, okay? Now this is something I did that you do not have to do. You can do your handles any old way you want, but I just thought this would be kind of neat, okay? I'm taking one of my pin blades, and at either end, I'm going to cut a slot on that fold that's about three-eighths to a half an inch, not quite half an inch, just big enough to slide a three-eighths inch handle through. I think it would be cute, and so I tried it, and it worked. So I'm just going to slice into that fold, okay, just big enough for a handle, and I'm totally off, and I'm not going to stress about it. It just is. So then I cut myself a 3 8 inch wide handle. I know that sounds crazy and we hate to use eights, but the 3 8 looks really good on this handle like I think it does. And for my first bag, let me show you. This one is six inches. This little handle was a six inch handle and it's fine, but I went ahead and did it in eight inches. I mean, no, 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 seven inches this time because I thought I wanted a little more handle. See how much more I'll handle I'll get? I think that'll be cute. This is where I'm going to go to my thinner adhesive. I said I was. Here it is. Go to my thinner adhesive. And on one side of that score line, I'm going to put some tape down just to one side because I want to run that handle into it. But don't cross your slices. 
Okay, don't cover them up. I did that and I learned the hard way. Don't cover up your little slices because you got to get that in there. So with my sticky tape here, I'm going to release the backer. Release the backer! <laughs> While you're at a joking point. <laughs> Connie Woods wants to know, do you have a preference between the cuddle bug or the big shot? I don't. I've only ever had the cuddle bug. I've used the big shot. I like my cuddle bug and I don't see her. I mean, I may one day buy another one just because I like to buy things. But honestly, I don't. I mean, it's the truth. It's the truth. I love my cuddle bug. All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to feed this through the slot from the front, okay? So this is the piece I wanna show on my bag. I'm gonna feed my handle through the slot I made and I'm gonna stick it down to that sticky tape, just like so, okay? Then I'm gonna take this side and I'm gonna bring it around and stick it through the other slice on the other side, just like so, and stick it down. And I'm kinda eyeballing about a quarter of an inch inside of there, right? So then, look, this is our purse topper. Our handle is in there. And it's on the inside, and I think it looks so cute like that because we don't have to do any work, right? Now we just bring this guy back over. Now here's where I use my art glitter glue. So I thought this made things easier, and I think it did. Uh, <laughs> Donna Jo says, because I like to buy things, she's with me. I do. I like to buy things. Yeah, you do. Sometimes I'm just like, nah, I'm going to get it. You know, the crafting world, although we think that there's constantly stuff being released, it, sometimes it has a hard time keeping up with us, you know? Sometimes we have the stuff. All right, so here's my pillow punch. This corner is going to sink into that little fold that we made, and I'm going to wrap that around. And here's what I did. With my art glitter glue, I just held it there for a few minutes. Not even a few minutes. I'm just going to hold it there till it catches, and that will be my little... This is so cute! This will be my little purse thingy. Right? I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So I'm gonna hold this here just long enough to dry. And then I'm just pushing these handles back a little bit because you know, we didn't fold them. I just want that. I like the longer handle a lot. I'll show you that compared to them in just a second. That seems to be sticking. All right. Now, you know what I did, Miss <laughs> Do what? Miss Jones said, did I give you the look when you said you like buying things? You did. You like turned your head down. Yeah. I think I'm gonna put this little black button on here. I think it's cute right there. It really needs a pearl. Are you kind enough to reach behind you and grab me a pearl? No. Nope. You're not kind enough? I bet you are. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I bet you're kind enough. And I think Can I'll put this white? down. Um, no, up there where it's got the little button jar in that little um, tray. Look in the middle shelf, middle section, there's a little button jar sticking out. There's a little tray of pearls in there. That's what I get for cleaning up. They were right here. I put them away right before this. <laughs> That's what I get. Uh-oh, that was Charmaine, not Miss Joan, who said that, Vince. Who what? That was Charmaine, not Miss Joan, who said that. Who asked if you made the face? Oh, I'm sorry. All right, I got me a glue dot. And I'm going to put that on the back of my little button. And I'm going to put that little button on here. Cute. The other thing I really like about this, guys, is because you can decorate this any way you want to and nothing gets pulled or tugged or opened or anything. You open it from here to get the goodies out. I think this is super cute. Let's get a pearl out. It just needs a pearl to look like a May May purse. Just needs one. You know it's true, right? Yep, 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 yep. All right, I'm putting a pearl in the very center of that little, oh, that just changed the whole look. The whole thing is now the bomb diggity. Look at that. I love this. Now, I did one other thing, okay? I did a little bow, and I used this baker's twine. And I gotta tell something, I'm gonna tell right now, full disclosure, I've never used this long trimmings baker's twine before. I opened this today for the first time and used it because I have some for the retail shop we have here. And this is the best stuff I've ever used. So I walked straight back to Vince and asked him to order it, and he has ordered it. So it will be here next week, I guess, Vince? Yep. And it is it is awesome. It does not fray or ravel. How did no one tell me about this? Stuff? Literally, no one ever said, May May, you need to try the long trimmings one. This stuff is awesome. Um, I'm not blaming you guys, but I love it. So we'll have this coming into the store at least by next week because he just ordered it. And he ordered every color we could get. So be watching for it because it's amazing. I'll show you in a second up close. All right. So then I took a little bow. Put a little art glitter glue in one corner here. Stuck this little guy down to that little bow, just like so. I mean, to that little glue. And just held it there for a second. I love it. 
I love it. How easy is this? Now listen, you don't have to have the punch board. If you want the punch board, we have it in stock. Go get it. You don't have to have the punch board. You can do this with the PDF. You can do this with the uh, with your Cricut because there's files for these little things everywhere. You could probably draw this. You could do this with a toilet paper roll. I'm serious. You could do this with a toilet paper roll. Just turn the corners down, cover it, and I want you to get in on that contest, okay? So if you are the first, um, if you're just now getting here and you don't know about the contest, we're doing a contest through our store gallery, okay? So if you go to our website, maymaymadeit.com, there's a red bar across the middle and it says more. If you hover over more or click on more, you'll be able to get into our gallery and you'll be able to enter a photo of yours. They don't have to be purses, okay? I wanna see what you can turn your pillow box into. You might make it Santa themed. You might make it a kitty cat themed. You might, who knows, okay? You do not have to have it as a purse, all right? So do whatever you like, then share it with us. There are guidelines on the blog post. We'll have that posted for you guys to see it. And I have a big die. Yeah, they do make dies to make these. So you could do it that way too. These are the same. I did these the same size, but look how different they look. Look how much slimming the black is. <laughs> Ain't that shocking? Now you know why I like to wear it so much. I'm not wearing it today. Look, I'm wearing pink. Pink. I never wear pink. Never. I'm surprised I'm wearing pink. So there we go. This black is very slimming. They are the same size. Really cool. All right, guys, that's it. That was super easy. We did that craft in 20 minutes. And the only thing I did was pre-cut the bag and the strip. I had those cut, right? So a six by six piece of paper, three eighths by seven inch strap. And this is just a die. I love it. I know, Christine, I'm wearing pink and yellow and blue. Look, it's like a piece of craft paper. <laughs> it's like a piece of scrap paper. That's you what I'm wearing today. Too much. I, well, you know. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna sign off this live stream and come back in to the Crafter After Show so that we can show you guys our Across the Mile stuff, which we have a lot today to share with you. And we got a lot of new stuff in the store, which I know you guys always wanna see. So I'm gonna turn this one off. Listen to me though, if you make a project like this or any project, we want to see it. Head over to our Facebook group called May May Made It and So Did I. You can share your projects with us there. You can share them with us on our gallery on our website, which is maymaymadeit.com. You can share your stuff on our fan page. You can share it wherever you would like to so we can see what you're making. And don't forget, after this video is processed and after I do the Crafter After Show, I will link the blog post. Tamitha, if you'll go ahead and make the blog post live, some folks can know where the blog is and they can just head over there and get started and see all the guidelines because we've got all that done for you. Thanks so much, guys. Give us about two minutes and we'll be back with the Crafter After Show. See you in a minute. Bye.